Very pleasant. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Banks. I'm the Deputy District Director for the U.S. Small Business Administration. We are a small federal agency, and our mission is to help small businesses start, grow, and succeed. We accomplish this by providing, among other things, access to capital, management and technical assistance, and we teach small businesses how to do business with the federal government. SBA's director, John Fleming, unfortunately could not be here with us this morning. He had a family emergency, but I know that he is here in spirit. Before I officially get started, I just wanted to acknowledge some very special guests in the audience today, starting with Governor Jack Markell. Thank you very much. Larry Morris, representing uh, John Carney's office. Ken Anderson, Dito. Is Ken in? Ah, okay. Not a problem. Diane Laird from Dito. Thank you. <laughs> Ivy Ibrahim. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Michael Brown. Winnie Mike. And I especially wanted to take the opportunity to thank the Southbridge Connects and the Neighborhood House, as well as the Southbridge community, for agreeing to host this event. We are proud to announce, as we stand on the path of Delaware's Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway, on Harriet Tubman Day, by the way, a new committee that will help partner with small businesses that are strategically located along the byway to help promote economic growth. The name of this committee is the Delaware Byway Committee. SBA is honored to have a seat on this committee and privileged to introduce some of the folks who will give you more details on the objectives of the committee, work um, that will be performed by the committee, uh, and how this particular committee will help develop Delaware's communities. Some of the tools that could be used uh, to get some of the travelers involved with this particular byway include coupons to visit various businesses situated along the byway, uh, tourist destinations along the business routes, signage and improvements, as well as grant opportunities to entice tourists to visit the businesses that um, are strategically located along the byway. The Delaware Byways Committee will begin its work right here along the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway. The Harriet Tubman Byway is a, road route, a roadway route tracing some of Harriet Tubman's documented movements through Delaware. The byway ties together historical sites with scenic panoramas that reflect landscapes that Harriet Tubman's freedom seekers would have seen as they passed through Delaware. And it's all tied together with the connector segments that will portion uh, uh, segments that will portion on the byway that passes through Southbridge, Southbridge community, and important gateways through the city of Wilmington. Starting with the Southbridge businesses that line the Harriet Tubman byway as passed through Southbridge community, we will work with the byway businesses, generate visitor traffic along the byway, and encourage those visitors to patronize these businesses. Byway businesses will be designated for visitation with a byway local logo seal in their business window. The first of which will be placed in the businesses uh, as we proceed with our business walking tour a little bit later on today. 
We hope that these efforts will bring success with time. We plan to expand, expand the Byway Small Business Partnership to all six of Delaware's Byway. Now, a little bit later on, I'm going to let some of the presenters here today tell you more about this initiative and the economic development promise that it holds. But first, I'm going to introduce some of the uh, partners that are in the audience today to talk a little bit more about this particular initiative. Uh, can I first ask Ryan Rucker, who is the chairman of the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway Management Organization, to approach the podium? Ryan? Yeah. Thank you, and good morning, everyone. My name is Ron Rucker, and I am the chairman of the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad uh, Byway Management Organization. Uh, just a short description of what we are. We work under the Underground Railroad Coalition of Delaware because we are a, a new organization. We're seeking our own, uh, shall we say, uh, independent organization, but we need to develop. We have to do select leadership and uh, pursue our mission. So uh, we're working on the umbrella of the uh, uh, Underground Railroad Coalition of Delaware as a starter. Uh, down the road, uh, apparently soon I hope, uh, we'll be an independent organization working on our own. I would like to say, uh, for starters, to say it's a great day. Part of our mission was to highlight communities and uh, residences and uh, businesses along the byway. And this partnership will fulfill one of those missions and we're very excited about this opportunity. To begin with, I'd like to thank Governor Barnkel for attending and taking time out of his very busy, busy day to help us with the celebration. Also want to thank, uh, again, the uh, community of Southbridge for hosting us today. I say today is the beginning of our new partnership with the Delaware Byways and small businesses and we're targeting all those businesses situated along uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, targeting those businesses situated along the corridor of all the Delaware byways. This is also Harriet Tubman Day, and what better day to celebrate the launch of the Byways and Small Business Partnership? And it's right here along the Harriet Tubman Byway. Say, so Byway uh, for Harriet Tubman starts in Sandtown, Delaware, where the Maryland. Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway crosses the Delaware line, proceeds north through Delaware, uh, all the way up through some very notable small communities, and then will terminate uh, just along Route 52 going into Pennsylvania. So there are a number of historic locations along Harriet Tubman, uh, Harriet Tubman's route. Uh, just as a note ex explanation, the byway itself isn't the only route that Harriet Tubman took. It's the major byway or major route through which uh, there are several branches. So we'll be hi highlighting those communities as well. So uh, there are some scenic stretches along the byway, which we want everyone to take advantage of. Uh, see the businesses, see this, you know, take, take a look at the scenery, and enjoy Delaware. These are parts of Delaware that uh, a number of tourists don't frequent very often. So we're looking at the uh, connector segments as well. And these are, again, um, areas to the sides of the byway outside the main corridor. And we want to target those businesses and help them develop. Okay, All along the route, there is a lot of history. Uh, Delaware is full of history. Uh, a personal note on my part, I've lived in Star Hill for a number of years now. I uh, started there before I moved to Newark and never realized that area had so much history. And that's something I bring to the table that I want to share with other Delawareans, especially tourists who don't know that much about Delaware. So <clears throat> this is what the Delaware Byways Committee is all about. Um, we're contributing to this effort, and we're looking for uh, some assistance along with our mission to promote the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway and the other Delaware Byways. One of the things we want everyone to do as they visit Delaware, visit Delaware is to notice what's around them. Get out of their cars. Take in the scenery. 
enjoy what we know is Delaware, and also frequent the businesses along the byway. This is part of our partnership is to build those businesses as well. When you build the businesses, you help build those communities. And share the history. History has become a very prominent subject in a number of different areas. And travel is one of the best ways to get to know history of an area. So I'd say, uh, what better time to start all this in the spring season? Uh, finally, we're done with snow, I hope. <laughs> and we can all get started with the, uh, the travel season. And summer, spring is the tourism season, so we need to take advantage of that. Okay, the Delaware Byways is cited to put our plans in motion. Uh, I'm new to the Delaware Byways projects, uh, just starting with the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway. And I want to take a moment to introduce some of the organizations that I will be partnering with, and they're part of the Delaware Byways Committee. And if you could, just uh, yeah. signify with a hand wave as I introduce you. The Underground Railroad Coalition of Delaware. Thank you. Okay, Delaware Department of Transportation Byways, uh, that representative is Ann Gravette, she couldn't be here today. And the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Management Organization, myself. Uh, okay, so the uh, Underground Railroad Coalition of Delaware are members there as well. SBA representatives. Thank you. And Southbridge Connects. Very good, thank you. Say some of these folks I haven't met personally yet, but uh, I want to get in the mix and get things started there as well. I want to talk about the revenue drivers that were mentioned previously. And uh, these are folks traveling the byway, and these are incentives to get them traveling the byways. And like I said before, one of the things we want them to do is not only see Delaware, but to get out of their cars and experience Delaware. So we're offering coupons by byway adjacent uh, businesses. Uh, these are being handed to travelers, and these are their encouragement or incentives to make purchases within these businesses and also uh, get to know some of the artifacts of Delaware. Locating the tourist discovery areas within the businesses, and like I said, certain historical artifacts, uh, memorabilia will be available in these businesses, and also uh, those things that are particular to Delaware. Signage and byway improvements. Uh, these are coming from a number of areas, uh, most notably Delaware Department of Transportation, and grant opportunities. These grant opportunities will provide financing for us to improve the byway and opportunities along the byway. So I would add that, uh, again, one of my personal experiences has been in Delaware. I've been in Delaware. I guess you can't call me a native. I'm an Air Force brat. We were transferred here but I've grown to love Delaware. I took a cross-country trip uh, some time ago looking for a new place to live since I'm used to the, the travel, and I came back to Delaware. So Delaware is a very nice place to live, and I like to share it with relatives and other visitors. There's a lot to know and learn about Delaware that a lot of folks don't know about. Again, I lived in a historic area and didn't know of its history, and it's something I want to share with everyone. Uh, it's not just Star Hill, there are adjacent communities that have been around for a while that no one knows about. And I'd like to highlight them as Camden, Odessa, Middletown, Newcastle, uh, even Wilmington, and uh, Delaware City. These are, I guess you would call them remote or rural areas that very few people travel to. You know, Delaware is known for its beaches. There's a lot of architect ar architecture here and agriculture and other items that folks will take, really take an interest in. Uh, as an avid cyclist, as a youth, I just rode all over the place getting to see the scenery. Uh, never thought about its commercial prowess. Folks can see uh, you know, farmlands, historic structures that are just situated in remote areas, and uh, basically get out and see what Delaware and America have to offer. So in closing, that is what my priorities are uh, with the Byway Management Organization. And uh, again, thank you all for attending today. Thank you, Ron. Debbie Martin, representing Delaware Underground Railroad Coalition. Come on up. Good morning and happy Harriet Tubman Day. 
Uh, I'm thrilled that the governor could be here today, and I think that Ron wants to talk to you about bicycling when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd also like to introduce uh, one of my esteemed compatriots on the Underground Railroad Coalition, Bev Lang from the Division of Historical and Cultural Affairs. The best part of my job, and I'm also the Historic Preservation Planner for the City of Wilmington, the best part of my job is making connections. And the most rewarding part of those connections are connecting people with their local heritage. The coalition is so excited to begin collaboration with SBA Delaware and Southbridge Connects to link the stories of the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway with local shops for our mutual benefit. A short story about connections. The year is 1856. Harriet Tubman waited, hidden, a short distance from here on the south side of the Market Street Bridge. She had a number of very frightened charges with her. She could not cross that bridge because patrollers were there and it was not safe. She made a connection. She sent a trusted person to Thomas Garrett's house, station master of the Underground Railroad here in Wilmington. He assembled his trusted operatives, both black and white laborers, and he put them in a false bottom wagon. And they posed as bricklayers on holiday. And they went whooping and carrying on across the Market Street Bridge, acknowledging the patrollers. Later that day, when they crossed back over, they contained Tubman and her charges and took them safely to Thomas Garrett's house, where he made another connection to William Still in Philadelphia and sent them on to freedom. People who make the decision made the decision to seek freedom, and those who help them have a number of things in common. Courage, planning, and determination. For us today, I think that all of those qualities are always essential for success. People who serve their community as a small business certainly know this. We wish our highlighted Southbridge businesses well and look forward to working with them to raise appreciation for our shared heritage. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Diane? Uh, good morning. I'm Diane Laird, State Coordinator for Downtown Delaware, which is a resource center for all things downtown revitalization. We're a resource center of the Delaware Economic Development Office. In 2013, Southbridge was named a Downtown Delaware Commercial District affiliate by DITO. And as a result, Southbridge Connects was established. Uh, Southbridge Connects is run by a steering committee that includes Councilwoman Hanifa Shabazz, directors from both the Southbridge Civic Association and South Wilmington Planning Network, and Karen Anderson of KRN Architects. Additional partners include Nemours, the Southbridge Business Association, and the SBA. This affiliate community continues to build partnerships with, with uh, other public and private partnerships, and these are very necessary to take on more advanced projects to build the community. Travis Smith has taken on a leadership role with Southbridge Connects. He also supports the community through his business, Act Generation, whose mission is to provide training and consultation services to nonprofits and for-profits to facilitate integration of technology. Travis encourages interaction between teenagers and baby boomers by way of technology with the belief that technology is here to connect the generations, not divide. This Southbridge uh, area and neighborhood continues to preserve and highlight its cultural and historic amenities, as well as to seek measures to enhance business opportunity. For instance, small businesses are now being assisted, as you, as you heard just previously, by the SBA, using the byway as a catalyst for growing the business opportunity. Southbridge Connects and its partners have initiated development gar uh, community development gardens and streetscape and pedestrian-oriented development with additional projects currently underway. 
Uh, the South Bridge Mural Project is a beautification effort that is currently underway for the community and will include two murals on the byway, directly on the byway. One in concert with Wilmapco that it will highlight exercise and healthy living and the other to represent peace and victory. A farmer's market is also underway and that is being led by the South Wilmington Planning Network and funded by Nemours. It's targeted to launch this spring with a location to be determined. A development of a website is underway and projects with UD's interactive media crew will support interactive media and social networking to promote the community, its development, activities, and business amenities. Southbridge Connects both leads and supports these kinds of efforts. DITO stands ready to support these and other initiatives with the community of Southbridge. Congratulations for successes to date, and I anticipate many more to come. As I mentioned earlier, SBA is proud to play a role in this Delaware Byway Committee. For the last few months, the Small Business Administration and our resource partners, the Women Business Center at First State Community Loan Fund, as well as our Small Business Development Center here, have been working with Southbridge entrepreneurs, helping them to develop business plans, teaching them the merits of doing business with the federal government uh, with respect to the federal government contracting programs. And one of the programs in particularly is our hub zone program. This community happens to be strategically located in a hub zone. And for those businesses that are here, they can take advantage of this program. This program provides, among other things, uh, potential for sole source government, federal government contracting opportunities. Um, contracts that are restricted to only hub zone companies. Uh, in certain instances, when there is a full and open competition, meaning that everybody can bid, um, uh, whether they are large business, small business, for-profit or non-profit business, the federal government can offer a up to a 10% price evaluation preference for those businesses bidding on those types of contracts. Um, and with that 10% price evaluation preference, it definitely gives them an, a, a competitive advantage. Uh, and then the other thing is when the federal government awards a contract to a large business, we negotiate goals with those businesses to strategically include hub zone businesses as a part of their subcontracting makeup. So is it is a tremendous opportunity for the businesses here. Again, we've been educating the businesses on the merits of this particular program. We've been working with community leaders trying to attract more businesses to move and relocate into this particular community so that they can take advantage of this particular program. Um, and we are very, very pleased with the progress thus far. Personally, I would especially like to thank John Osnich. Please take a stand. He's with the Delaware Small Business Development Center. He has been instrumental in help helping a number of businesses in the community with their business development goals and initiatives. I would also like to take this opportunity to invite you, if you have some time afterwards, to join us as we tour a few businesses um, that we've been providing assistance to. Uh, you will be meeting Suzette Fleming. Please take a stand, Suzette. <laughs> she runs the Harvest Christian Retail Stores. Also, we have Tyran Smith of Sepia Cleaners. Tyran, where are you? I did see you earlier. There he is. Tyran um, happens to be the overseer of one of the oldest cleaning business in this particular community. Bonnie Smith. Bonnie White, I'm, you know what? My apologies, Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie, um, she uh, is the owner of Miss Smith, uh, Miss Bonnie's Savor the Flavor Seafood Restaurant. And let me tell you, I had the opportunity to sample the cuisine. It is outstanding. Bonnie has some uh, aggressive plans for expansions that she do not want me to share with you, but I think that if everything uh, works the way that we want it to work, She's going to be extremely pleased, and it will create an opportunity for all of us to really take advantage of uh, what she's doing there. But before we head out on the tour, there are some other folks here that we would like to introduce and have them uh, uh, provide a few remarks. Um, Ivy, and I'm going to butcher this name. I apologize. <laughs> Come on up. 
Thank you. <laughs> My apologies. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to stand up here and look out and see so many faces and feel so welcome here in Southbridge. Uh, my name is Ivy Ibrahim. I'm with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Development. Uh, I've worked closely uh, on number of occasions with a lot of you all out here. In my role as uh, Director of Neighborhood Development, one of the focuses that we do is we act as a liaison between civic and community groups uh, in the city of Wilmington to make sure that from within the city, we empower them, we try to make sure that whatever the goals and things that they have, we help them implement their goals. We try to make the bureaucracy within the city a lot easier, so it's my role to work with a lot of the directors and everybody in the city to make sure that your goals and the resources that you need are, are taken care of. I'm pleased to see our Director of Economic Development, Mr. Jeff Flynn, sitting out in the back. Um, uh, Councilman Namdi uh, wasn't mentioned, but I'd like to say we work closely with him, and I'd like to uh, also mention him, and my, of course my brother Mike Brown will be coming up next. From the uh, Office of Neighborhood Development, in terms of the focus, as I've sat and listened, I just want to say that I'm really, really excited and very pleased because it's, this is community driven. This is what it's about. This is from the ground up, from the neighborhood. Uh, Travis and everyone involved has done a great job. We've looked inside in terms of as we had as a focus from neighborhood development, corridor, corridor development within the neighborhoods is a great way in terms of revitalizing those neighborhoods. That's been a focus of ours throughout the city. If we can uh, revitalize our commercial corridors within our neighborhoods, then that helps to develop and revitalize the neighborhoods. As I've looked at the byway and heard about it, this whole thing of gateway development and beautification is so important. People come through all the cities in and out, and this is the first impression a lot of times that they get. So as much as we can in terms of developing our gateways, our passageways through our cities and our neighborhoods and beautifying those uh, is going to really, really change how people perceive Wilmington and how we perceive ourselves. Community revitalization is focused on small businesses and to promote those businesses. This goes a long way, not just for the business, businesses themselves, but these are the businesses that hire the people within the community. So it's th those kind of connections that we can make uh, within our neighborhoods in terms of how we raise the neighborhoods up and raise the people within our neighborhoods up also. Uh, this whole thing in terms of uh, the Byway and Harriet Tubman and the institutions that we have here also helps in how the community is involved instilling this neighborhood pride. You know, we have to have this pride within our communities and within our cities, you know, and take pride in what we have, as the gentleman has said. We have a lot to offer, a lot of assets, and a lot of times we don't look at that ourselves and focus on that the way that we should. But when we see clearly all of the assets that we have and how we, uh, as a city and as a state, and everything, you know, understanding that these assets are something to be cherished, something to be utilized, and something to be promoted to the benefit of all. So I just want to say that I'm really pleased with those things that's going on, and this really is uh, what makes my job a whole lot easier, too, and everything, when you guys are doing this, and, and, and I really appreciate it, and I just want to say thank you. Thanks, Ivy. Thank you. Uh, Michael Brown. Good morning to you all, and um, happy, uh, happy Tugman Day. Uh, Governor, uh, my colleague, Honorable Nandi, it is a great pleasure to stand in the, in the, uh, th before you in the absence of Councilwoman Hanifa Shabazz. She extends and asks me to tell you how, how pleased uh, and gratified she is about the work that this organization is doing. And so she's in Washington, D.C. She's the vice president of an organization of uh, African-American uh, elected officials throughout the country. And so she's there. Uh, hopefully, she'll be sitting down uh, in a room with President Obama 
sometime this morning. But I'm most pleased to be with you today for the coming together event, as I called it, which focuses on our, your history and our heritage and support our collective efforts to improve or even create new businesses in our community. I'm honored to represent uh, Councilwoman Hanifa Shabazz. It is always and is not able to be here today and the person who heads the legislative branch of city government, our city council president, Theo Gregory, who sends his greetings and best wishes. This event extended to connect businesses to the history of this area also serves to further connect the Small Business Administration to the businesses it serves in the South Bridge area and beyond. We hope that more businesses will come to understand the resources available to them for the SBA have a greater understanding of why history in this area is so important. I congratulate the SBA and the supporters of the historical byway movement for focusing on the people of South Bridge and the people who operate the local businesses. This message today is clear. We can all play a role in promoting businesses growth by touting our history and heritage and opening our doors to tourists and additional businesses along the way. On behalf of Theo again and Hanifa and all of City Council colleagues, Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of today's ceremonies and to express support for your efforts. Thank you once again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and honor to introduce a true champion of small business and the governor of this wonderful state, Jack Markell. Thank you. Thanks, John. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let me say uh, first to uh, Councilman Brown and to, uh, I don't even see that. Where's Namdi? Oh, there he is, right here, Namdi. Uh, how much I appreciate all of the organizers for putting this together, all of the different groups that have come together. And this, frankly, seems like a great idea on a number of fronts. Uh, it's certainly going to be good for local businesses, which is huge. It's great for us to uh, bring more visitors uh, to our area. Uh, and it's important that we remember this really critically important part of our history. And I think about Harriet Tubman, uh, truly one of the most important people, I believe, in US history for what it is that she did. And I would just have to guess that were she to be here today, she would she would say, you know, what, 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 she, what she was dealing with back then, which was, you know, dealing with the ugliest of human nature. And really just trying to help people achieve the most basic of all human desires, which is freedom. I think she would say that this is the next and logical step, which is economic freedom for the local businesses along the way. And this combination of remembering our history, of bringing folks to our area to enjoy what Delaware has to offer and always to remember who we are as a people and where we've been and frankly the where we've been, not, not all of where we've been is something to be proud of. Proud of. But you know, perish the thought that we pretend that that part of our history doesn't exist. Because if we, you know, if you don't know your history, you're condemned to repeat it. And I think it's important. And whether it is commemorating the 50th anniversary of the march this past weekend, or this, which will in perpetuity give people an opportunity to remember what Harriet Tubman was all about, but turning it around and saying in that, in, in reliving that history and bringing people to our area, it's also going to create more economic freedom for the businesses in the area as well. And that's a pretty good combination. It's a pretty good combination. I think it would be a lot better if, you know, if we didn't have to, if there was no Underground Railroad for us to have to remember. But there is. And it's where we've come from. And so I think, again, you know, the idea, and whoever came up with this idea of putting together our history, our local businesses, 
uh, and particularly thinking about the and, and you know br bringing people to Delaware to to visit the stops along the underground rail underground railroad is a very important uh, and powerful combination and I congratulate all of you who have uh, come together to to make it happen so uh, thank you for inviting me this morning I'm sorry I can't stay I've got a meeting in my in my office in Wilmington that I've got to get to but uh, to to all of you to all the organizers congratulations I really look forward to seeing what this means not only for Southbridge uh, but as Ron said for you know places up and down uh, this byway uh, and uh, I think that uh, a lot of folks are going to benefit, and not least of which, all of us for remembering this, uh, this part of our history. Thank you all very much. And last but certainly not least, I want to invite our partner in crime, <laughs> Travis Smith, Southbridge Connects up to give a few words. So, so they call me trouble. <laughs> But, um, but uh, I think nine months ago, uh, we started a journey uh, with, with a great team of people, um, Rasheed McDixon, who's the head of South Women Planning Network, and Maria Reed, who's the head of, of South Bridge Civic Association. And I was a new guy on the block, but, but a homeboy, because my parents had the dry cleaner in the, in the South Wilmington, in South Bridge. And um, really, when we started out, and a guy, I, there's a guy that's here in the room that bugged me, his name is Bill, and said, uh, won't you come lead this commercial district affiliate program? But really, what I was gearing more into was um, technology, because you know I came out of AstraZeneca uh, um, far as a part, a downsize moment, and I began to build a, a technology firm, which really build a, focused around uh, bridging technology and communication for all generations, because technology was was not built to blind the folks, but really built to to tie us and connect us together. So really, you know, I thought the journey was just for a small group of people, but more so it's for a bigger, broader set of folks. And really, that became a, a, took life in the community. And when I presented it to the, the, the local leaders, they said, hey, Travis, you know, let's, let's do this project. So, well, let's call it e-history, our history. So we said we're going to take a journey of how to show the history of a community to the people, but through the eyes of technology. Well, why that way? Because that means that we would connect the generations that would be divided, that are divided by technology, to now bring them together through the use of technologies. So what greater way when we talked with, you know, uh, uh, my colleagues here, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Pilcher, we met up at Zoops over a cup of soup. And what happened was we, we chatted about, I said, Jennifer, and we're just as bubbly together, you know, it's like two, two, two mice in a box fighting. But, but, but the excitement is what that, that energy and the passion and the drive for what you love is what breeds and builds community. And that's really where we are. What we have to do is we have to, to pull away our bias and our issues and the, the plight and the struggle because there were people that struggled on behalf of us to make it here. Same as my mother and father, Charles and Elmie Smith, they were part of the struggle of Marvin Thomas and several of the community leaders, Clarence White, White's body. There are several community leaders who really struggled so that, so that myself, me and some, I'm 43, but there's a generation behind me like Shaquem who are to carry on the mantle of the new generation. So in, to, in order to do that, we must speak to them in their, in their capacity. And their capacity is technology. So kind of basic, really a basic understanding is, well now how do we take this time capture of today, which is technology, and put it in the eyes of young people now that will not lose the understanding of what Harriet Tubman meant so we're going to walk and take a tour along the byway and see a couple businesses. But as we walk, we have to think and reflect on the fact that there was a woman who led a, a crusade of people to freedom along the same route along this byway. There were several politicians who walked and came out of South Bridge, uh, uh, Her Johnson, Henrietta um, Johnson, and, and um, um, there's several, and you, you can name it a bunch. Um, there's future politicians like Dick, uh, Rashima Dixon. But there's lows along the way, Oliver, Norman Oliver, and uh, Honey for Shabazz, and, and Herman Holloway, and there's, there's a host and host, and uh, Arthur Scott. So there's a host, because people say, well, why South Bridge? Well, South Bridge was the beginning of a lot for a lot of people. If we go back, I have to give it a little bit to even Eden Park down the street, which is the beginning of South Bridge. There's a person named Robert Morris who owned a mansion at South Park. Of, at Eden Park, who was the, who was the uh, financer of the revolution, American Revolution. There's a person behind him 
which was uh, uh, J, which Julius Garrish, we call it Garrish's Lane. He was the person who actually owned the mansion that actually fought in the Civil War as the first Latino to fight on behalf of America in the Civil War, one of the first. So there is great history that now we hope can, we can embody into something that we call now Southridge Connects. So get it in your DNA. So when you're sleeping, you're probably going to say Southridge. Yeah. Southridge. Yeah. And then I'll say connects family, connects friends, connects business, connects who? Connects you. And that's why we're here to start not just something that starts in Southridge, but to, an excitement and an energy and, and, a, and a, just something that's just transparent and just carries across all of Wilmington and all of the world. Why? Because we're going to use technology to carry this message across the land of what Harriet Tubman and some of the other, other great leaders meant in a small community like this, which means we can actually use this as a pilot to do in all of the other areas across the city and across the land and across the world. Thank you for coming also. And we're, we're, we're going to take this moment, right? We're, we're ready to walk? We're ready to walk. Come on, John. So, so at this moment, uh, tr Travis never changes. <laughs> I don't care whether it's the governor or the president. Who, you know, we, we must be excited. Mm -hmm. Sorry, is what? Yes. And what? Yes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what else can you do? Uh, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to give them an opportunity to get back to their businesses. Again, thank you very much, folks, for taking part of, the, part of your busy uh, schedule to join us uh, with this very, very important initiative.